All right guys, what is going on? Welcome to the channel, I'm Cody. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And today's video is pretty much going to be about automotive photography basics. So a couple of things that we're gonna be going over in this video are a couple of different tips and tricks that you can use to up your level of automotive photography. So before we get into these tips and tricks, luckily today we have a really cool car that we're gonna be using. My buddy Chris allowed us to use his 1994 Acura NSX. So now that we know what vehicle we're gonna be using, let's hop into the tips and tricks. So the first thing that I wanna go over with you guys is angles and positioning of the actual vehicle. So there are multiple ways that you can position a car to make it look as attractive. And these are just a handful of versions that I like to use when I'm doing a shoot. So to start off, we're gonna have the car at a front left quarter angle, which is gonna be showing pretty much 25% of the vehicle on the left side. The next angle that you're gonna do is you're gonna continue on the left side, but it's actually gonna be showing more of the vehicle. So it's gonna be a front left three quarter. So this is gonna show around 75% of the vehicle instead of the quarter angle that we did just before. So for those two angles that we just covered, we can also flip that to the other side. So it would then be the front right quarter and it would be the front right three quarter. So after these four angles showing the front left, the front right, um, pretty much what we can go into is a front straight angle showing only the headlights, hood, and the bumper pretty much. So after the front shot, we're gonna go and flip it 180 and go right to the rear. So this is pretty much gonna be identical to what the front is, but you're gonna be seeing the rear. So you're gonna see the bumper, the trunk, the taillights, and such. Now this is also a really nice shot, and one of the tips that I would do, depending on the lighting when you're shooting this tip, is have the, the tail lights on because it gives it a nice glow and it looks really nice. So next I would go on to is the side shot of a vehicle that is gonna show only the one side of the vehicle, whether that's the right side or the left side, but there will be no front or right showing in any sort of way. Now moving on after this side shot, similar to what we did in the beginning of the video where we talked about the front left, front right, three quarters, and quarter, what we're gonna do is for the rear now. So it will be a rear right quarter showing only 25%, but you're gonna have the rear of the vehicle now. Just like if we were to do a right rear three quarters, you're gonna see the rear of the vehicle, but you're gonna see 75% including the rear. Now, as well as what we did before, we can go from the right side, now over to the left side. So what we'll have is the rear left quarter and the rear left three quarter. All of these are gonna be showing vehicles at different angles and showing a certain percentage of that side of the vehicle. Now all these shots you can change up all the time and I pretty much have this set up in a routine of a shot list that I do for every shoot that I have. So moving on from the angles and positioning of the vehicle, I kinda of wanna talk about the composition. So a lot of times in shoots what I'll do is I'll bring the camera down really low down to the ground so you gain that foreground element of the actual ground itself and it gives a really nice low angle because as a person, you only see a vehicle from your, your sight. So when you can take a camera into a spot where your human eye normally isn't, because you're not gonna see me laying down on the floor, you know, like to look at a vehicle, unless you're checking the undercarriage. But for, if you can find a way to have a camera placed where a human eye, when you're looking down at a vehicle, will change the complete look of the photo. Just in the same way of going low, you can go high. So whether that's you have a ladder that you can actually get on, or a lot of times what I'll do is I'll honestly jump in the bed of a truck that I have or the trunk or something that elevates me higher. It could be a light post that there's a little leveling area. Anything that I can find where I can get the camera higher than what I even can do when I raise up my arm. But those are just a couple different ways that you can change the composition. Another way is using foreground elements. If there's trees, if there's light posts, if there's pretty much anything you think of, bushes, and maybe there's some, some chips that you can put in the foreground, but anything to kind of give a little bit of foreground element, that upgrades the photo a whole lot more. Another tip that I wanna give you guys, kind of going back into the uh, angles and positioning of a, a vehicle, always remember to turn the wheel facing to where you're gonna be shooting because it doesn't make sense for you to have the, the wheel face another direction and you're seeing either tires or you're not seeing the wheel, period. You always wanna show the face of the wheel towards you. That's always gonna look more pleasing for the vehicle and the photo itself. Adding to another little tip that I like to use, or more or less a tool that I like to use, is a CPL filter. Circular polarizing filter, pretty much. I do not leave my house without that when I go onto an automotive shoot because pretty much what that does is if you're looking at a vehicle and you see pretty much the bright blue sky with all the clouds in it, it kind of is distracting when you see that in a windshield. So what you can do is you can turn that circular polarizer 
completely eliminate the clouds, give it a nice, almost looking like it's tinted window, which gives it a whole lot of cleaner look. A little side note for using that tool is when you're switching from going to landscape to portrait, always remember to turn that circular polarizer when you do so, because it all depends on how you adjust that. Because if I'm shooting landscape and then I kind of flip it over to portrait and I forget, my photo is not gonna look good because I forgot to turn the circular polarizer. So always remember, just keep a mental note that you have to turn your circular polarizer depending on where you are because there'll be times where I'm shooting photos, I'm in landscape mode, I take a couple photos, ooh, looks great. Then I turn over to portrait, take a couple photos, I forgot to turn that circular polarizer, I'm like, ooh, not good, nah, -uh -uh. let me take that again, turn the circular polarizer, right? so much easier. So that's just another little tip for using that tool. Always remember to turn that circular polarizer. All right guys, so we're gonna be talking about rollers and a couple of tips and settings that you should be looking to do when you are shooting those types of photos. So one is the safety. Please try to be safe. Do not be doing this on a whole lot of busy public roads. Try to find a closed road or a private road where you don't have to worry about one yourself when you're hanging out of a vehicle if another car is gonna be coming by or just your driver and the other vehicle's driver. Moving into settings from safety for rollers, one of the key aspects is your shutter speed. So a lot of people say that one over 80 to 100 is a really good starting spot. Personally, I feel that you should be around one over 30 to one over 50. That's like a sweet spot in my opinion. You're gonna get the most motion blur in the background and in your wheels of the vehicle that you will be shooting. So from those settings, a lot of times when I'm shooting rollers, I do like to have my vehicle going from either 40 miles per hour to 70 miles per hour, depending on where you are on a road, how busy it is. Always remember safety is a key. Do not be doing outrageous speeds, doing rollers at 100 miles an hour. That's not necessary. Another little disclaimer that I want you guys is always have your camera attached to you when shooting rollers. This has happened to me a couple times where I've totally forgot to attach my camera to my wrist or to my neck and I've almost dropped my camera. Now you don't wanna be <laughs> shooting rollers out of your car and then your camera just drops and all the cars that are behind you or the car that's behind you that you're shooting just runs over your camera. And you're gonna come running to me and be like, Cody, well my two, $3,000 camera just got run over and I'm gonna be like, yo, I told you, make sure it's attached to yourself. All right, make sure it's attached to your, yourself, your neck, your hand, your, whatever it is. All right guys, I think that's really about it for these basic tips and tricks for beginner automotive photography. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And you know what, if you guys want, if you go grab your camera right now, go take a couple photos, tag me on Instagram at codymedia.com and I'll gladly take a look at them, give them any sort of constructive criticism to help you guys out to get to that next level. All right guys, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you had a great time learning a couple new tips and tricks. I know I had a great time teaching you guys a couple new tips and tricks. If you guys could go please like this video, maybe even leave a comment. And if you guys aren't subscribed, please go subscribe and I'll catch you later, peace.